All right. Good Monday evening, everybody. We are we doing this? Yes, we are. Okay, cool. Just wanted to make certain we are where we need to be. Thanks for joining us. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. It is again a quiet evening in the Mid-South area. I apologize if my voice is not what it once was, but there's a reason for that, and we'll talk about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit to see what's going on across much of the Mid-South area where it comes to your uh, weather forecast for right now. We again continue to see some fairly quiet conditions into much of the rest of the week. No major problems being seen out there right now. Again, where the chances of anything involving uh, precipitation are concerned, any major amounts of precipitation anyway. But again, we'll be looking for that possibility in parts of the forecast coming up here in just a little bit. You got any questions about the forecast, please drop them into the comments section. If you are on uh, Periscope and Twitter, we'd love to hear more from you as to what's going on. And we'll talk more about the complete forecast coming up here uh, in the Mid-South and beyond in just a little while. Another hot day in the Mid-South and things are going to again be on the quiet side and very warm as we go throughout the rest of the forecast period so unfortunately not much is really going to be changing there. Welcoming everybody to uh, the broadcast, the netcast tonight from our Facebook page that's facebook.com slash WREG and thanks to everybody for joining us uh, on there for tonight. Busy day, we had an opportunity to go down to Hernando to talk more about uh, weather to some of the students down at Hernando Middle School and we'll talk about that coming up here in just a little bit. If you've never joined us before, thanks for joining us on News Channel 3 on Periscope and Twitter. Great opportunity, again, for you to check and see what's going on uh, with more of the forecast. Our op looks like everything's streaming pretty well on our Periscope page, so definitely good news on that. For right now, again, not much really going to be happening in the way of big changes, but we will be looking at some slightly nicer temperatures as we get into the later portion of the week. More on that in just a little bit. Again, complete forecast in the blue bar shaded here. More information available at wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to know a little bit more about what's going on out there. Let's go ahead and get started for tonight and show you a little bit more about what's happening again around Germantown. Not too much to show you, mainly clear skies, beautiful view of the descending crescent moon, and you should be able to see the International Space Station passing overhead here within about another uh, 20 minutes or so, just less than that. We'll show you that information coming up here in just a little while. More of our weather bug cameras, go to wreg.com slash webcams for more. Uh, Carol Williams Graham, welcome to the show. Betty Schur, welcome as well to Julia Cavallo. Thanks to everybody uh, for stopping on by tonight. And so far, no questions being posted on Periscope and Twitter. So again, good news on that for this evening. So if you have any questions or anything about the forecast, just please say so. We'd love to have you along for this. Radar at this time, again, there's just not that much going on. We did have, whoopsie, hang on, there we go, a scattered shower just around the cold water area, but that has since fallen apart. Likewise, the shower is down around Crowder, Mississippi. There's really just not much left of that. You can see them fading away. Once the daytime heating is gone, there's not much left of these storms, and there's just really not that much to expect throughout the rest of the evening when it comes to anything involving rainfall across much of the Mid-South, so definitely good news on that. It does look like, and let me see if I can switch over here real quick, uh, into and around the area of I-40, and sure enough, if we take a look at that color scheme right there that you see right along that blue line, which is I-40, that's Doppler radar bouncing off the atmosphere and going back down to the ground, and that's detecting traffic on I-40 right before the Crowley's Ridge area, just to the east of there and Forest City. Those brighter colors that you see there, and a little bit more back over toward around areas of West Memphis, briefly showing up with some brighter colors. That's Doppler radar being able to track traffic, and that's something you see sometimes up around Blytheville. You saw it yesterday, but it's a little bit more noticeable in this area for tonight. Again, Doppler radar can do some very interesting things, and that's just one of them that we can actually see them actually happening there, so that's pretty cool to actually be able to see that going on. Let's take a look and see what's happening again into the rest of the forecast, which does not hold out too much hope for any immediate 
uh, cold air conditions out there. Let me switch over from my Periscope broadcast so everybody can see more about what's going on. In an effort to keep everybody cooler, we're taking a look at weather on Mars, on the Curiosity Station. This is something I featured to the kids today at uh, Hernando at the middle school. Uh, the coldest uh, temperatures, again, occurring right now with numbers of 16 degrees below zero for a high temperature at Gusev Crater, where the Curiosity rover is located. A minimum temperature of 112 degrees below zero. So some very cold conditions uh, with Mars Curiosity rover, minus 122.8 minimum ground temperature out there. If you'd like to pick up this information, it gets posted about two to three times a week, and all you have to do is go to mars.nasa.gov so you can see a little bit more about what's going on from the fourth rock on the sun. So again, keep an eye as to what's going on with that with NASA. Great opportunity to see more there. Kevin Dunn, welcome to the show. Bart Thompson, uh, construction going on. Yeah, I was going to be seeing uh, a little bit more in the way of that over the next couple of days in lots of the area. Not too much to show you in the way of earthquakes from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis. Nothing immediate happening and not detecting anything moving through the area from earthquake energy in various locations around the globe, which you can see. And if you'd like to know more about that, all you have to do is go to the Center for Earthquake Research and Information at the University of Memphis at memphis.edu slash CERI. And of course, the United States Geological Survey has got a lot more information about earthquakes out there, including the big ones, which again, you can track and see very easily on this map. Great opportunity to see more. Go ahead and take this out. Out to the entire planet and you can see the bigger ones uh, in and around the area of Indonesia the Philippines expecting the possibility of an eruption of a uh, earth of a volcano in the Philippines if I'm not mistaken or in and around Indonesia it was somewhere around that area I'm not too sure if that's exactly where but I do know that the warning level was raised on an, a volcano out that direction. We'll keep an eye on that for you for the next couple of days. Sunrise and sunset, the moon is a, way, a waxing crescent, which means the shadow is getting smaller and the lighter side of the moon is taking over. Sunset today was at 6.52. Sunrise will again be about 6.40 or 6.51 uh, as we go into tomorrow morning for Memphis. Uh, moon set will be at about 1032. Should be a beautiful view of the crescent moon as it sets in and around the Mid-South area. We're up to about, again, uh, as of right now, 12 hours almost even of the amount of daylight out there, but it is waning as we get into those longer nights and those shorter days out there. Great view of sunset from the Weatherbug camera at Jesseville School District in Jesseville, Arkansas. That's over toward the Hot Springs area, but a dynamic looking sunset picture uh, in and around the area of central and almost southwest Arkansas. If you'd like to see more of our weather bug cameras in the Mid-South, all you have to do is go to wreg.com slash webcams for more information as to what's in and around the Mid-South and how you can get your weather station set up. Talk to Tim Simpson if you'd like to see if you'd like to sponsor a weather bug station around the Mid-South area. All right, into the tropics. Again, Lee is a stronger storm tonight than Maria. Winds of about 85, almost 90 miles per hour, easier today, and that is a Category 1 storm. Maria is is weaker. It is now a Category 1 storm down from a Category 4 several days ago. The winds of about 80 miles per hour and as of right now expected to do that slow chug up the coast as a hurricane. Should be a tropical storm by early Wednesday morning and then taking a right hand turn and heading way on out into the Atlantic very quickly as a cold front moves on through and that extra energy does a very good job of sweeping this thing out into the central Atlantic and eventually Actually, it's really kind of cool to take a look at this. The remnants of Maria are expected to go across the Atlantic and could wind up being a rain-soaked storm for the British islands, for Great Britain, somewhere in the next couple of weeks. So that, again, is going to be kind of interesting to see a little bit more about what goes on there. Uh, Kevin Dunn will give you uh, the space station view coming up here in just a minute. It's about 10 minutes away or so, so we'll talk more about that as soon as we wrap up the forecast. Uh, currently, again, not seeing a lot going on. We do have this cold front trying to make its way into the area, and high pressure is doing a good job of kind of impeding its progress. So it's kind of stuck out to the west. But eventually, in the next couple of days, it is going to be making its way on through. And as it does, it'll be looking for better chances of rainfall heading on through the area. 
What we've got is, again, this storm system trying to get a little closer to us, but failing miserably because high pressure is basically kind of holding it back by just a little bit. Now, into the weekend, again, high pressure builds in from the west behind that cold front, and another cold front moves on through, bringing us even cooler air by about Sunday. Now, that's not going to be an Arctic blast, but it's about as close as we've gotten for a while, so we could see some very nice weather into this weekend. A little bit on the cool side, and once that area of high pressure leaves the area, remember air around high pressure rotates counter or clockwise, so we may see some very warm weather coming back our way as we get into the next few days. We'll talk about the seven-day forecast here in just a little bit. Currently, again, National Weather Service not showing anything in the way of hazardous weather. Very quiet for the next several days, right on in through the weekend. And for us in the Mid-South area, we will be seeing, again, the potential for some fairly mild numbers into the rest of the evening. Your temperature forecast out there are going to be seeing the numbers back in the upper 60s to lower 70s pretty much exactly where we were for the last few days. High temperatures tomorrow, yeah, well, here we go again, back around 90 degrees. Low temperatures on Tuesday night, mid to upper 60s, but the winds start to switch by just a little bit as we head into Wednesday, and that's our new front coming on through. It's going to be weak, it's going to be wrung out of any moisture, but it is going to be giving us our latest downturn. Temperatures in the high 80s on Wednesday, temperatures on Thursday in the lower 80s to upper 70s, so that'll be feeling a little better, and by Friday, getting into the 70s across the entire Mid-South area. Now again, toward the weekend, Saturday looks pretty good, pretty warm back in the mid-70s or so, but the winds are going to continue out of the north and even get a little bit breezier into Saturday as we see again those winds out of the northeast with that next cold front coming on through. So highs on Sunday will be just as pleasant back into the mid to upper 70s, so a beautiful weekend on its way for the Mid-South. First Skywarn training session meeting will be tomorrow, Tuesday the 26th at in Oxford, Mississippi at the Central Fire Station, 50 County Road, 1032 in Oxford. That'll be at 6.30 p.m. tomorrow night on Thursday in Marks, Mississippi. That's for Quitman County. That'll be at the Marks Community House 200 Pecan or Pecan Street, depending on how you pronounce that. Afterwards, other meetings coming up for Fulton, Mississippi, Jackson, Huntington, Somerville, Tennessee, Lepanto, Arkansas on the 16th of October, 23rd of October, Paris, Tennessee, Parsons, Tennessee on the 26th, 30th of October, Alcorn County, still location to TBD on that, Lawrence County, Walnut Ridge, Arkansas, McNary County, Selmer, Tennessee, and Walnut, Mississippi into November, and that'll round it out. There is not a meeting for Memphis or Shelby County at this time. Uh, usually National Weather Service doesn't hold one for the fall semester, but they will hold one for the spring one. That'll be coming up in February or March, so stay tuned for more information on that. Okay, in about a little less than 10 minutes, the International Space Station will be rising in the southwest skies. So looking toward the area where sunset was, the moon, Antares, very bright star, and Saturn will be in the southwest, and you need to be looking to the right of that. That will, again, be the place to notice a rising bright light heading up and around the southwest horizon. So it's going to be kind of paralleling toward the horizon by just a little bit. And as it does, it's going to go very close to Arcturus, that bright star in Booties the Shepherd. And then it's going to curve back around again by just a bit into around the area of the northern horizon. And right back around the North Star area, that's where it's going to enter into Earth's shadow at about 8.30 and disappear as that heads back on down toward the northeastern horizon. So right around, if you can find the North Star, you'll be able to see it, see it pass by there. But mainly looking again from southwest, curving around to the north, going right between the North Star and the Big Dipper. That's where we're going to be seeing it coming up. So rising in the southwest at about 825, but it's going to take a couple of minutes to clear that haze layer so that you can actually see it a little clearer. All that haze in the atmosphere down toward the, the horizon, difficult to see through because you're looking through a lot more atmosphere. So give it a couple minutes to clear that, and then it'll be rising at about 827, so about six minutes away from right now. We'll go ahead and wrap things up so everybody can get outside and take a look at that. It is Banned Books Week. It is an important time to fight for literacy and for 
expression and one of the best ways you can do this is to promote the idea of freedom of expression and of course the freedom to again give us what the ability to read the books that we have out there and why the books are challenged that's all stacked up by the American Library Association which you can find out more at ALA Dot org and there's many different ways which you can get involved in things like this. It's a great opportunity to see more and the American Libraries Association does a wonderful job in keeping everybody updated on stuff like that. So ALA.org. Remember that words have power and I'm probably going to dive into a rereading of 1984 at some point in time just to see what goes on there. Don't forget to check out my Facebook page. Links to Banned Books Week are there in the top portion on the banner and throughout the rest of the night we'll be posting more information about that and you can get more information about a lot of other inter interesting things around my Facebook page and also on my Twitter account at twitter.com slash aonic underscore wreg3 and also you can get more information again on my Periscope page Looks like we're having some difficulty on that, unfortunately, for right now. So we'll just go ahead and switch back to everything else. Again, for the next uh, couple of days, it's going to be a bit on the warm side. Seven-day forecast holds that promise of some nicer temperatures coming our way as we get into week's end. Finally, going to get out of the broiler for a little bit, and that's going to feel really good. Don't forget to check out my forecast bright and early tomorrow morning on AM 730 on Yahoo Sports Radio. Bob and Josh with Talk Back Live. Great opportunity to catch up on what's going on. If you can't listen on air because you're too far away from the signal, dial us up online and that's at www.talkbacklivenetwork.org for more information on that. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. This has been Monday night's edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog, Weather Overtime. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online.